Commissioners, thank Mr. you for uh, allowing us to come. It's, a, it's an opportunity for you to learn. It's an opportunity for us to share. So that's what we want to do. Uh, I am Kevin Johnson. I am the Director of Cooperative <coughs> Extension. Thank you. Uh, Cooperative Extension is, it is very different. We are a partnership between Wayne County, uh, North Carolina State University, and North Carolina A&T State University. Uh, we are an outreach of those uh, land grant <coughs> universities. This is a picture of our staff. We currently have 21 full-time staff members and 47 part-time staff with our personnel funding provided by both county, uh, North Carolina State grants and user fees. <coughs> I'll, I'll back up just uh, briefly on that. Uh, we have seven agents. I'm considered an agent too. Uh, we are generally funded. Percentages are, are different, but it's usually half and half, university and <coughs> county. Uh, we do have full-time county employees that work in the 4-H department. Uh, and a lot of them are user, they're, they're paid from grants and user fees. Most of our, that big number you saw, 47, most are paid from user fees and grants. Uh, Wayne County Cooperative Extension uh, provides research-based programs in agriculture and natural resources, 4-H and youth development, and family consumer sciences. Extension has been in Wayne County since 1915. The first two agents that came here, uh, one was a farm agent and one was a home demonstration agent. The first two agents in 1915. Uh, our department goals. Uh, with the help of the extension specialized committees and our extension advisory council, educational programs uh, are developed and delivered, but not limited to the following, the following five areas in 2012, uh, sustaining agriculture and forestry, protecting the environment, maintaining viable communities, developing responsible youth, and developing strong health and safe families. Uh, in agriculture and natural resources, I will tell you we do partner with Patty. We partner with Rick Therrington, who is a USDA office. So we work together on a lot of things. So it, that's not part of my formal program, but I did want to mention that. Uh, farming and agriculture is important in Wayne County. We are the fourth largest agriculture county in the state. Uh, farming and agribusiness is 22% of the county's gross farm income at $763 million. That is a 2008 number. I will tell you that number is much higher. We will hopefully be getting numbers in 2012. A lot of that's based on uh, the ag census, which is being done currently right now. So hopefully, I would, I would dare say those numbers are much higher. Uh, farming and agribusiness is 20% of our county's employment, representing 11,831 jobs. And farmland and forestry is 71% of our total county's land mass. Uh, we help support Wayne County's uh, industry by educating farmers on the latest technologies to increase profitability. Uh, today's trend is in agriculture is larger, more diverse, and efficient farming operations. Uh, Cooperative Extension is a leader in introducing new crops and technologies to help our farmers. An example of this is uh, in 2011, we had 100 acres of grain sorghum, and in 2012, we had 2,700 acres of grain sorghum. And we were one of the leading groups, along with Patty, I will say, uh, helping promote this, this industry or to help promote this new crop, which will help our ag industry and our livestock industry. Uh, we provide training in pesticide education, uh, waste management, we support our local agribusinesses and provide leadership development to help promote our industry. Uh, we also answer thousands of horticulture questions for our farmers, or not farmers, for our residents uh, in Wayne County. Uh, we have a plant clinic that is open to citizens of Wayne County that bring in, you know, and ask gardening questions. They bring in samples. Our Master Gardener volunteers contribute 270 hours 
of volunteer time last year answering questions uh, about uh, landscape problems, turf, maintenance, you know, boost trees, shrubs, all those types of things. Uh, Cooperative Extension also assists local citizens with horticulture programs, including backyard food production, uh, community gardens. Our master gardener volunteers were instrumental in designing and maintaining several gardens in the county that you're aware of, including our Veterans Park, uh, the Wayne County Public, the, the community garden at the Wayne County Public Library, and the Stony Creek uh, Flower Garden. Uh, agriculture has a need to train leaders for the future in our industry. The Carl Best Agriculture Leadership Program was developed to train our future leaders. The program is a collaborative effort between Wayne County Cooperative Extension and Wayne Community College. And as of this year, we have 59 individuals that have completed the course. Uh, participants learn how to discuss political issues that could affect their industry with local legislators. Uh, they are trained to, to teach and have a voice for our industry. Uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the We Dig It campaign that we have, uh, Cooperative Extension, uh, realize the need to provide a marketing for our local citizens to make them aware of the impact agriculture has in our local economy. Uh, the slogan, Wayne County Agriculture, We Dig It, was developed. And these are probably some of the billboards you have seen throughout the county uh, promoting our industry. Uh, various strategies have been used to educate the public on the importance of agriculture, including these billboards that you see. Uh, educational booths. We have a speakers bureau that goes around and talks to civic groups and other different groups throughout the county. Uh, we also have uh, radio advertisement and we do TV. 4-H and youth, as you see the 4-H clover, it's one of the most recognized uh, symbols in America today. Uh, Wayne County 4-H program is one of the strongest programs in the state uh, we reach over 8,000 youth in 2012. 4-H uh, reaches kids through schools, traditional clubs, after-school programs, and camps. Research has shown that kids that participate in 4-H are more likely to succeed. Uh, quality after-school programs are important in the development of youth. 4-H operates 10 after-school programs involving anywhere from 250 to 300 youth at Northwest, and these are the schools, Northwest, Northeast, Carver, Tommy's Road, Eastern Wayne, Grantham, North Drive, Spring Creek Elementary, Brogdon Primary, and Brogdon Middle. These programs provide, a, provide youth a safe, well-supervised program using age-appropriate activities at an affordable price. Youth and 4-H school programs are performing better in school through positive learning environment. 4-H also collaborates with the public schools, providing after-school programs at selected schools through our 21st Century Grant, in which schools are tutored along with 4-H enrichment activities. Teachers reported the program helped increase the students' school grades. Last summer, 4-H also held 31 or 34 summer camps with 581 youth participating and 41 junior leaders assisting with the program. Giving youth the opportunity to give back to their community is important in helping youth grow into responsible citizens. 4 Hers in Wayne County recorded 4,963 hours of service to their community in 2012 with service projects including cooking soup for our local soup kitchen, assembling gift bags for hospitalized <coughs> children. 4-H also gave leadership to the county's big suite. 232 youth and 4-H volunteers cleaned over 23 miles of streams and trails throughout Wayne County and collected 1,400 pounds of trash. Also through 4-H drug prevention program, about 500 prescription pain pills were collected and removed from homes and disposed of properly. That is amazing. 
The other program, I mentioned two program areas, agriculture and 4-H. The other one is family and consumer sciences. Our family and consumer science programs work with food, nutrition and wellness, food safety and preservation, housing and energy conservation, child development, parenting, education, aging, and family resource management. Wayne County Cooperative Extension in partnership with the Wayne County Health Department is providing a solution to the problem of inactivity and unhealthy lifestyles. <coughs> Our Fit and Fabulous program, now in its fourth year, currently has 90 participants of all races, age, and genders that come out to the Wayne Center twice a week to, to engage in a hour-packed, intense workout that challenges them to move more. And I can tell you, I've looked in there multiple times and I don't think I can keep up with them for five minutes. Uh, so members of the Wayne County Extension and Community Association, or as we just call them, ECA, volunteered 11,249 hours in 2012 to their community in various projects. Some of the community projects supported by ECA included Edgewood Developmental School, Emergency, emergency Medical Services, Wayne Memorial Hospital, Kitty Askins Hospice. Club, club members respond to needs and wish lists as they arise and have pro provided this past year in numerous ways, including needy, uh, needy newborns, hundreds of uh, personal hygiene items such as soap and shampoo, as well as school supplies for school children teddy bears for EMS vehicles, and snacks for cancer patients. Cooperative Extension with funding from Smart Start provides a parents and teachers program to work with families in their home on parenting skills and kindergarten readiness. Extension parent educators make monthly visits to families with children ages birth through five years old on teaching parenting skills with age-appropriate curriculum, developing screenings and referrals to community agencies. The program is currently serving 72 families, including 98 children, and has an additional 70 families on a waiting list wanting to get into our program. Uh, through Extension's Expanded Food and Nutrition Program, or FNEP, for limited resource family, families, Adult and youth learn about nutrition and fitness. Adults are taught how to prepare foods for their families that are nutritional, balanced, and how to stretch their family dog. This is our budget. I uh, want to explain it to you just a little bit. Uh, cooperative extension is not mandated. Uh, our funding is provided by county, state, North Carolina State University grants and user fees. Uh, do want to point out uh, our budget that we, we, we submit from Cooperative Extension. We have three budgets from Pam who works with us closely on this. The $775,000 that you see under county funded, uh, you also notice out of that number, 181000 is money that was given to us by the General Assembly for the Regional Ag Center planning. Uh, they actually gave us $200,000 in 2006. We continue to show that money in our budget and uh, you know we're currently working on some projects, on some stuff with our Regional Ag Center. So really our uh, county budget for cooperative extension uh, is inflated a little bit by that number. You see the monies that we get from North Carolina State, it's $385,000 that goes for our agent salaries. It goes for uh, some travel support. We do have two state-owned vehicles that we utilize. Uh, user fees, you see we have $226,000 in user fees. Uh, the $200,000 in 4-H is the monies that, that the, the parents and youth pay for our after-school programs. So the program itself is self-sustaining. Uh, the $26,000 is for other ag programs, uh, mostly ag, uh, some of our horticulture, and we do have family consumer science collect monies for our programs. So, uh, and then under grant funded, you see we have $474,000. Uh, the 191,000 is our partnership 
for children money, which goes for our parents and teachers and our uh, Young Moms Connect, which is essentially just is very similar to our parents and teachers program. The $282,000 is money that we get from the 21st Century Grant, which is money that comes from the Department of Public Instruction. And we partner with the school system on that. And we also uh, get funding from East Point, which is our prevention grant. Uh, you do see this two state-owned vehicles. Uh, value of volunteers to extension program. You see we have 5,731 uh, volunteer hours. And of course, we do get <coughs> training from the university. Uh, they have to keep, uh, you know, the different departments at NC State do provide us the training uh, that we need to continue to go out and, and assist our citizens. Mr. Chairman, could I yes, inquire? Actually, from the county funding, the 181, uh, the 181,000 is not recurring for funds. Mm -hmm. you know, on an annual basis, it would be the 582 and the 11. Yeah. Yes. Is that yes, correct? Yes. Yes. So, a so actually, it's it's less, that, much less than. It's that. much less. That number is just being inflated, but we have to we have to. Show it's that. a carry over that yeah. as a reserve. That so. Okay. <coughs> One question, Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Commodity. Uh, which fund came from East Point? What was the dollar? The number is incorporated. If you look under grant funded and and uh, the 4-H column, you see the 282,917. That number is incorporated there with the 21st century grant. I, I don't know the specific number, but uh, is it? it's over $100,000. I can't remember. From East Point? From mm -hmm. East Point, yes. It's a contract. Uh, Wayne County's future need for cooperative extension is strong. It will continue to be important to support agriculture and agribusiness and the need to educate the public on agriculture's impact in the local economy. 4-H will continue to provide a quality youth program that strives to increase school, school performance, prevent risky behavior, and provide opportunities for community service, helping youth grow into responsible adults. Cooperative Extension will continue to work with the citizens of Wayne County to guide them to help their lifestyles, <coughs> build stronger communities, and build stronger families. Through our strong partnership, Cooperative Extension will continue to help improve quality of life for Wayne County citizens by providing unbiased research-based information. And that's what I have, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to ask on, on the 4-H, uh, about, do you know about how many students uh, in Wayne County are involved in 4-H? That, you know, we have, I told you that 250 to 300 youth, that's in the after school program, but we have what we call the school enrichment. So we have uh, people that go out and do embryology projects. We do uh, worm vermiculture I think we have composters we have garden. that's it's hard to say uh, and also we have a lady that does the FNET program for the youth and she reaches hundreds of kids she goes to almost every elementary school in the county we reach a lot of kids through through 4-H we do a lot of it enrichment in school and then we have our after school programs that's good second second thing uh, how many uh, family farms that we now have in Wayne County? The 2007 census has over 700 farms, uh, farm operations in the county. Uh, of course, as you know, we have a lot of landowners that don't farm. Uh, it's hard to say, but right now in 2007, we show over 700 family farms. Still farming almost as much as we did 50 years ago. And we had 5,000 farmers in 1950. But I read somewhere that we, since 1950, am I correct in this, that we have lost about 150,000 acres yes. of farmland? Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, in fact, we've lost like 125,000 acres mm -hmm. since 1950, and we've lost, you know, 4,000 farmers. A lot of that, that loss on farmers was because of tobacco production. As you know, you could live off, we had small tobacco farms everywhere. 
that's changed. The, the whole economy and the concept of tobacco has changed. Uh, but yes, we've lost 125,000 acres of farmland, and that, that is a, a problem. And of course, we do have the Voluntary Ag District Program that we work with. Patty's involved in that. Uh, Connie Price is involved in that with the planning department. So uh, we're, we're trying to protect our farmland. Along with us. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kramar. So yes, sir. while you lost 125,000 acres, how many farmland acres do we have left? We have 175,000 acres of cropland, farmland, farmland, which that can include pastures. Uh, so we went from 290,000 to 175,000 acres of farm. And of course, that's being lost to development. Uh, right, right. 290,000 down to 175,000. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm sorry. I was just I was just having a thought here. <laughs> From your perspective, then, uh, no, that's that's asked for editorial. I was just thinking about the <laughs> number. No, 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 no. I was just thinking about the number of housing developments and all that that's coming in in competition with the farmland. On the one hand, one sounds good, but on the other hand, it may not be. I, I was just a it, it thought as I was internalizing what you were saying. It's it's a balance. We have to find the balance. You know, we have to protect certain areas. And uh, Mr. Smith and I have talked about this. You know, we talk about <coughs> concentrating growth and development in certain areas and, and corridors. And and Mr. The Chair, Mr. Chairman, we've done that. We've had that conversation. So uh, it, it is a balance. You have to have both. There's no doubt. I think with that too, Mr. Kamardi, as you've uh, certainly uh, seen this on the planning board, um, there back in 05, 06, 07, we were planning at least three or four subdivisions every quarter, and it, it went on like that for three or four years. And now that we've seen the the recession in 08, 09. Um, we have an extreme numbers, as you know, uh, of vacancies in these subdivisions that haven't been built upon. We have literally hundreds within the county that uh, subdivisions that are just probably 30 percent occupied. Um, so as, as we look forward, we, we hope to get use out of those subdivisions and concentrate on those and not take up any more farmland because we have a, an abundance of an inventory of uh, subdivision lots so because of our slowdown in 07 08 all the way up to 13 so as we get back going here in the next five to seven to ten years we'll be focusing on those existing subdivisions but that's I'm well, sure Mr. You chairman you were sort of reading my mind this, uh, I know you served on uh, with the experience you've had serving on the planning board also it just starts to cause you to reflect on uh, watching what the differences are what what the balance just like what you said what are the balances that we're dealing with and uh, that that's very important that nothing gets too much in any one direction it, it, and I, I could give a little editorial and I'll keep it very <laughs> limited I promise <coughs> uh, if you look if there's any development that ever occurs where's it gonna go it's gonna go to well-drained soils which is farmland uh, you know we're all excited about the new highway 70 bypass but the side you don't see is how much farmland is being taken and, and you don't see it's, it's only a handful of farmers and landowners that's being affected you don't see that but you know it's taken right roughly at a thousand acres of farmland out just to build this new bypass mm -hmm. around the county uh, 300 foot right away 20 miles long yep. you know you look at uh, the pits they got to get the dirt <coughs> look at the, the clover leaf it adds up mm -hmm. so and then when you have the four interchanges and you <coughs> add either industrial residential that's or commercial within those interchanges then right. you're going to lose that that farmland that was around that interchange suddenly the whole perspective changed you know is it is it worth for the landowner is it worth putting crops on or is it worth putting some type of industry or development you know it, the value of that land went up mr donnery i see bill's not here so I, i'm gonna ask you to kind of elaborate a little bit in regards to your 
uh, the needs there in regards to your facilities. Can you give us a little bit of a background in regards to the age of the Wayne Center? Uh, you know, I was going through there uh, the other day and I was amazed to find out how cramped your spaces are. And I think you'd be a little bit remiss if you did not put in a little bit of editorial there in regards to your facilities. I would, I would love to do that. Uh, <laughs> hey, you open the door. <laughs> Patty, you want to go back? Yeah, go They're going to go. Pat, Patty, Patty <laughs> told you she, she was very nice the way she said that. She's on the north, or she's on the George side face. She's in the basement. Uh, <laughs> she, has, she, has, she has one door. She has one door. Uh, she has to go outside to go to the bathroom. We have our kitchen area downstairs. We call it a kitchen. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but it's a, it used to be a kitchen. Uh, all purpose. The, the, if you want to go to the bathroom there, you have to grab a doorknob that has a couple keys on it and go go to the bathroom. Yeah, it's 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 a step above an outhouse. Uh, the Wayne Center was built. It was completed in 1959, so it's uh, 50 almost 55 years old. Uh, you know, the needs for agriculture and for, for our county were, way, were different then. They were very different. Uh, we've got people in our office that are stuck. We've got people down below Rick's office in closets. We have people in closets. We have them. I met, I met that lady, and she really has decorated that closet up very yeah, well. <laughs> we, you know, we she doesn't need that anymore. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got challenges. The uh, building is a, it was built with a flat roof. Of course, it leaks. Uh, uh, Eileen's office was leaking a, a month ago. We tried to patch it. It's continued. Oh, it's still we still it tar drips on us occasionally. It's nothing to be sitting there and a drop of tar pop down on your desk while you're working. Uh, the, the Wayne Center itself is still a very nice building. Uh, we do manage the Wayne Center for the county, and uh, you know, it's still a nice, but it's leaking. Our screen, I'm waiting for us to have to replace our screen, because water, every time it rains, you can see the water dripping on our screen in there. So uh, it's, it's very challenging. Uh, parking is a problem uh, there when we do have big functions. Parking is a big problem there when we have the big functions. We'll see people parking across the road in a parking lot that is not the county's. And, and that then they call myself. They, they call Lee and then Lee calls me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so there, there are some challenges there, uh, but, but we're making do with what we got. But there has been an effort for almost 10 years now to, to work on consolidating and having a regional ag center and partnering with Cherry Farm with uh, the Center for Environmental Farming Systems. Uh, there, there's some great opportunity there that we've been working on. We've had some challenges around, you know, throughout the years, but, uh, but we are still pursuing some opportunities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, just one last one about, Party. maybe this might be a Mr. Smith question. What is the cost to, to this new center? What, what's the broad, maybe the approximate cost. Well, we did a study a few years ago and we're actually looking at, um, with the help of the board and um, some volunteers out in the community, we're bringing the committee that was together a few years ago back together as part of the CIP or capital improvement process to revisit that. So we'll be bringing you some updated figures very shortly. Uh, we're bringing uh, Mr. Steve Allen, who did that original study for us. That's part of that 181, the 200,000 that was given to us uh, to help update that study. And so he's going to be calling me Monday afternoon, and we're going to revamp that. And we also think because there's been a lot of changes in the last five years in ag service, consolidations, changes. We need to look at our square footage again. But also, there's some other opportunities for sites. Um, around the county, so we need to revisit that. So we, we've, I've talked to Mr. Allen last night in detail from Charlotte, and he's coming down um, next week to work with us. So that's, we'll be bringing you some updates as part of the CIP with facilities. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an interesting question on the cost. It's certainly an interesting um, editorial from you this morning. Uh, <laughs> and if we go back just a quick moment to the Carl Best leadership conference that we had at Wayne Community College with the group that got together. There was a gentleman from, I believe, Worley Farms, um, ben out Thomas. in sort of my neck of the woods. His name was Ben, ben Thomas. Ben Thomas. Mm -hmm. And one of the three, 
one of the three um, subject matters that they brought up before our commissioners, uh, he brought up the regional ag center. And um, taking that, um, Carl Best, the leadership group, and listening to that, and listening to 4-H, and the enthusiasm and excitement, but his presentation on the Ag Center um, certainly was was good and, and struck a point that the young farmers are coming up as young farmers were back when this existing facility was built back in the 50s, I think. They were young farmers and excited, and, and uh, now he's a young farmer and excited and bringing the same subject matter up nearly 60 years later. And the important part of uh, your um, point was is the legislative, how important it is to get the legislators in the state involved because of the funding, and um, that has been done. And uh, Mr. Payton is like uh, Mr. Daughtery said, is he's, he wishes Bill Payton was here because um, a bill, a signed bill to that as a commissioner to champion that, and he's done a great job in that in the last three weeks, taking that information that Ben brought for us and the information that you've put together and the information that has been put together over the last six or seven years yeah. uh, and got it back off the shelf and moving forward and trying to get this into the General Assembly with our House members and our Senate members to, to have a bill introduced here very, very shortly. So it's amazing how when you, when you get on uh, <coughs> the wagon and everybody works together, how you can accomplish so much quicker instead of everyone fighting one another. The yeah. unity aspect and you guys are doing a great job. But I wanted to finish up with this question. If, oh, yes, sir. You, yeah, I just want to make one comment. That one, the key word is regional. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is not county, this is regional. That's, you know, I want, I want that to brought out, because that's, that's the key word, is regional. And, and, and Mr. Chairman, if I could, the, the yes. term regional, you know, if, if we were to go into a site near Cherry Farm, Cherry Farm is one of several farms that the university and the Department of Agriculture have together. And, and it's, it's a site for research and education. And, uh, it, you know, if you partner with them, if you, uh, you bring in, you know, the agencies, but also consider, you know, we, we have an ag program being taught at Mount Olive College. We have ag programs being taught at Wayne Community College. You know, where you could come in and have training labs, uh, you know, have people from the university come in here, have a place where our farmers can come and be trained. It, I think regional is key here. I really do. And the next and last issue I, I guess I was going to speak on is your needs. What can, I always like to know what we can do for you. Uh, you're doing a whole lot for us. It's, it's keeping us informed and doing a lot for, for the job that you're in in the department. But I see here the Cooperative Extension's future. And it says here in your second block is you need for quality youth development programs as well as that affordable after school care. I'm really concerned about the first part of that, <coughs> youth development programs. So how can we help you find these programs? I know we're doing it now on the middle school on the middle school with STEM, moving it from a junior high down as far as the third, fourth grade and trying to get these kids excited about um, STEM research. Is that right, STEM? Yes, STEM. Yeah, STEM. Yeah. STEM. Mm -hmm. um, so, in agriculture, what 4-H, I understand, and, and youth livestock. And, but give us your final, if you're going to sell something right now in youth programs, what can we do for you? Well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, the county has been very supportive, but we do rely very heavily on grants. I mean, for some of our programs. And you, you talk about the STEM, that goes into our 21st century, it goes into our prevention. <coughs> We're out working with school kids, a lot of times in the schools. But you know, we're at the mercy of a grant. Uh, I do feel like our 21st century grant, I think that we will get that, that's good. So that'll put us back at uh, four of our schools. Prevention, I'm not sure. You know, that's, that's an East Point grant that we get. You know, I'm not sure, I hope to get it. We're, we're reapplying, I, I, you know, we're gonna be positive, that's what we are. But, you know, uh, we've got some programs that uh, are making high impact, but they could be in jeopardy, now, there's no doubt. So, you know, as far as needs, <clears throat> you know, there's always 
financial needs, I guess you could say. Uh, uh, my number one thing that goes through my mind on agriculture and the reason we put agriculture is the building. I feel like that's, that's a space problem. It's, we, we don't have room a lot of times. The Wayne Center is where we do a lot of our programming and that thing is booked up every day. I mean, every day. And it's used for various things. Uh, so it, it's a problem. If we don't use the Wayne Center, then we're limited to what we call our kitchen area. And then we're limited to going to Mount Olive College, Wayne Community College, somewhere else. A school, we go to schools, uh, fire department, you know, wherever we can find them. <coughs> so, but that's, that's if I, I, I would tell you, uh, we may in the future have to come to you to help uh, keep some of these programs that we know are beneficial. We may we may need some help on that. Okay. Any other comments, questions from the commissioners? Thanks, Mr. Johnson. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you very presentation. Much.